The Sound of Music boasts enduring appeal and definitive icon status as one of the greatest movie musicals of all time. But there are some moments you might have missed when you watched it as a kid that stand out much more in adulthood. The Sound of Music has one of the most iconic movie openings of all time. Whether you've seen the movie or not, you can probably visualize Julie Andrews launching into song with a spin atop the mountains of Salzburg, lifting the spirits of viewers the world over. As a kid, this moment was probably just a thrilling start to the movie. However, watching the film as an adult, you can't help but notice just how impressive the shot is from a practical standpoint. It turns out getting this legendary moment on camera was anything but easy. As Andrews explained in an interview with the American Film Institute, the cast and crew had, quote, terrible difficulty with the scene. Because we see Maria's spin from above, the crew actually filmed the scene from a helicopter, which flew at Andrews sideways, with a cameraman literally hanging out the door. The helicopter then turned around to repeat the shot, hitting Andrews with strong drafts that, quote, flattened her into the field. It was fine for a couple of takes, but after that, <laughs> you begin to get just a little bit angry and a little bit annoyed. When Maria arrives at the Von Trapp mansion, she's greeted by the stern, cold-as-ice Captain Von Trapp. For kids watching the movie, he seems like the ultimate scary dad, but for adults, the captain comes across as more of a silver fox. As The Guardian noted at the film's 50th anniversary, Christopher Plummer's captain is among the sexiest military men anyone had ever seen in movies at the time. And as an Entertainment Weekly article about Plummer's performance noted, many fans still cite his performance as Captain Von Trapp among their first movie crushes, with very good reason. Even though Christopher Plummer himself had a somewhat difficult relationship with the character, once calling the sound of music, quote, an albatross around my neck, it's clear that he suited this stern but warm character perfectly. And older fans over the years have clearly noticed just how well he fills the captain's naval uniform. Captain Von Trapp's parenting skills almost certainly look a whole lot worse to adult viewers than what they remember from childhood viewings. As a kid, watching the captain treat his kids like members of a naval crew in The Sound of Music, barking orders at them, summoning them with a whistle, and forcing them to march around the house had a bizarre sort of logic to it. He was a grieving widow, after all. Maybe imposing structure on his children was his way of coping with loss. However, through more mature eyes, this parenting is nothing but inexcusable, regardless of the captain's personal grief. And seeing the children's visible fear of their father at the beginning of the film adds a sad, even heartbreaking side to what was once a silly scene of kids marching. As Anne McLear of George Washington University pointed out in a 2002 NWSA journal piece, the captain's disciplinarian approach reflected a changing attitude towards gender roles. As McLear pointed out, it was up to Maria, the nanny, to help the father figure become softer and more domesticated with his children. That shift, according to McLear, reflected a very post-war American understanding of changes in family structure at the time the film was made. As children watching The Sound of Music, most of us probably missed some of the ominous scenes at the beginning of the movie. In one scene, Rolf, the postman and Liesel's secret boyfriend, exchanges a few words with the family's butler, Franz. As a kid, the moment comes across as a little dull. However, for adults, it's a sobering moment that foreshadows the political unrest to come. In the scene, Rolf and Franz discuss, quote, developments and movement, which for older viewers is a clear reference to the Nazi party. In other words, he and the family butler Butler are both pretty despicable characters right from the outset, even if the whole Von Trapp family doesn't know it yet. In fact, re-examining this brief scene sheds some light on why Franz is seen watching the Nazis intercept the family later in the film when they tried to escape the first time. Chances are he tipped them off. As kids, we probably didn't notice just how bad Rolf really was from the very beginning. As one viewer pointed out to NPR, Rolf first appears in the film as a romantic hero rather than as the bad guy, so it's no wonder we never really noticed it before. For. for children, the Sound of Music song 16 Going on 17 probably seems very grown up. After all, the idea of being a 16-year-old with a 17-year-old boyfriend probably seems a million miles away when you're a child. However, for adults, the song takes on a more sinister note. The song actually reveals the layers of oppression that young women like Lee Sol faced at the time. In fact, throughout the song, Rolf repeatedly explains how he intends to take control of Lee Sol's sexual awakening. The whole, quote, you need someone older and wiser line of thought is definitely a little uncomfortable. Of course, as adults, we also see the irony in the song, and in Rolf's overall 
treatment of Liesel. As The Guardian pointed out in a retrospective on the film, Rolf is barely an adult himself. And he's dumb enough to want to join the Nazis, so why does he get to be the one to tell the only slightly younger Liesel what to do? Whether you find the song uncomfortable or ironic, we definitely view this scene in a whole new light as adults. One of the most famous parts of The Sound of Music has to be the set of matching outfits that Maria makes out of her old curtains. The clothes serve as play clothes for the children to wear as they gallivant around Salzburg, learning to sing while the captain is away. For kids watching the movie, the curtain clothes serve merely as a visual indication of the kids' transformation into more fun-loving, easy-going children in Maria's hands. However, adults watching the scene almost certainly think of the sheer amount of work that would have gone into the clothes. After all, Maria makes seven unique outfits by hand. This is one dedicated seamstress. Naturally, the curtain clothes became an iconic piece of cinematic costuming after the movie. As the Daily Mail reported in 2013, the outfits were so iconic that they were expected to sell at an auction for over $1 million. We've already mentioned that the late Christopher Plummer is something of a hunk in this movie, and when the romance between him and Julie Andrews really starts to get going, adult viewers certainly notice it. One of the key moments of sexual tension comes at the Von Trapp party when Maria and Captain Von Trapp dance together in the courtyard. For kids, the scene was probably just a little boring. However, for adults, the scene sizzles. Yes, while there are plenty of moments in the film for kids, this particular scene isn't for young viewers. It's for parents who understand the subtext of the dance as it allows Captain Von Trapp and Maria to get a little intimate, despite being in public and in front of his own children. There's a lot going on beneath the surface of this socially acceptable act of closeness. The more we see of Uncle Max in The Sound of Music, the more we realize that his character is a little problematic. For kids, he comes across merely as the friendly uncle who helps the kids fulfill their dreams of singing on stage. For adults, Max's morals are thrown into question. Max is portrayed as being extremely self-interested, which becomes problematic when it comes to his approach to the threat of the Nazis in Austria. In one scene, Max flippantly says, "'What's going to happen is going to happen. Just make sure it doesn't happen to you.'" As an adult, this moment jumps out, and Captain Von Trapp's angry reaction to it makes a lot of sense. It's clear that Max is the type of person to avoid standing up for his beliefs in favor of self-preservation, even when it comes to Nazi Germany. Max's live-and-let-live attitude towards politics can be quite hard to watch in our modern context, when speaking up about your beliefs is arguably more important than ever. After the party where Maria and Captain Von Trapp share their steamy Austrian folk dance, the Baroness convinces Maria to run away. Maria returns to the Abbey, where the Mother Abbess helps her to realize that her future lies outside of the Abbey walls. For kids, the scene is pretty straightforward. Maria has to go back to the Von Trapp family to embrace a new life and to follow her dreams and her heart. However, for older viewers, the scene is laced with more adult undertones. As NPR noted, Maria's decision in The Sound of Music isn't just about love, it's also about chastity. It's basically the mother abbess letting Maria know that maybe she's not cut out for vows of celibacy. As adults, we definitely see Maria's struggle in a new way. After all, her life as a nun would be very different, especially when it comes to the question of celibacy. For children watching The Sound of Music, Captain Von Trapp's fiance, Baroness Schrader, comes across as the ultimate villain. Not only does she manipulate Maria into leaving the house, but she also threatens to ship the kids off to boarding school once she's tied the knot with the captain. But for adult viewers, the Baroness comes across in a brand new light. She is glamorous and stylish, and she's also incredibly mature. Plus, when she finally realizes that her fiance is in love with Maria, she takes the classy way out rather than throwing a fit. In her understated, shockingly grown-up breakup with the captain, and she even tries to make him feel better, saying, I really don't think you're the right man for me. You're, um, <laughs> you're much too independent. We never realized it till now, but the Baroness is actually a pretty wonderful example of an independent, strong woman who refuses to settle with a man who won't give her everything she deserves. The wedding scene in The Sound of Music is pretty spectacular and romantic. With the gigantic cathedral, Maria's stylish gown, and the chiming bells, the scene initially seems to be nothing but the dazzling climax of the movie's romantic subplot. However, when you watch the movie as an adult, the ominous undertones of the scene become all too clear. As Maria and the captain kneel in front of the altar, the camera pans up towards the top of the cathedral for a startling transition. As Raymond Knapp pointed out in A Piece for American Music, there's a, quote, eerie moment of sound design that merges the joyous wedding bells with another set of bells, ones chiming to commemorate the Nazi regime's annexation of Austria. So this joyous moment is actually happening alongside a very dark day in European history. For kids watching the movie, the sight of soldiers marching through the streets is a little unsettling, but for adults, it's far more jarring. 
In the final scene of The Sound of Music, we are taken back to the hilltops of Austria as the Von Trapp family hikes their way across the border to the safety of Switzerland. The bird's-eye view of the family fleeing Nazi-controlled Austria has become an iconic image, and it's definitely a fitting way to end the film. However, for adult viewers, it does raise the question of how they got that far on foot. As it turns out, the hike would probably have been impossible. In fact, the real Von Trapp family who provided the inspiration for the film did not escape on foot, nor could they have, because the Swiss border is actually a five-hour drive away from Salzburg. In the real story, according to the real Maria Von Trapp, the family simply got on a train. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more list videos about classic movies are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.